they obviously didn't grow as well as some of these other shoots. Farmer and dietitian Jenny Schmidt runs her family's farm in Maryland. Across their 2,000 acres of land, they grow grains, vegetables, and wine grapes. Some crops here are GMOs, short for genetically modified organisms. These plants have been genetically altered to take on certain traits, whether it's resistance to herbicides and insecticides or increased nutritional value, like the soybeans that have been genetically modified to have a high level of the heart-healthy oleic acid. It's naturally found in olive oil. Copying and pasting is probably a good analogy in terms of how we copy and paste in a Word document. It's taking them from here, cutting them out, and putting them over here. And as a result, you end up with high oleic oil in a soybean that has had its DNA changed. If you were to look at three different fields of soybeans, you would not be able to visually tell the difference unless there was a sign out front that said, this is what it is. The scientific literature says GMOs are not harmful to human health, but GMOs continue to be controversial among consumers, particularly in developed countries. Despite the debate, certain GMO crops are already in the global food supply, whether as produce or feed for animals. For example, BT corn is genetically modified maize that contains a protein poisonous to some insect pests. BT corn now accounts for 90% of all corn grown in the U.S. According to the United Nations, for more than 20 years, farmers in 30 countries around the world have been growing biotech crops. And as climate change threatens global agriculture, the urgency for flood and drought-resistant plants is on the rise. Last year, we had double the amount of rain in this region. We had 80 inches of rain as opposed to our normal 40 or so. And tomatoes are field grown. They take up water and then their skins crack open because there is just an excess amount of rain. Uh, same thing happens to grapes in the vineyard. Uh, like this year, we were on the opposite side of things where it was really not enough rain. Our living is based on the weather, the soil and the weather. Those are the two main drivers. For some people, it's really going to change the types of crops that they can grow. It's also gonna be important in terms of plant breeding and not just in terms of GMOs, but in plant breeding in general is, are companies and universities developing plants that are more resilient to climate change? The U.S. government is looking at one plant that's proven highly resistant to both flood and drought, sorghum. At the University of Berkeley in California, Peggy Lamo is leading a five-year, $12 million sorghum study funded by the U.S. Department of Energy. Sorghum is similar to corn, uh, and it is the number two uh, bioenergy crop in the, in the U.S. right now. I have a picture of a plant that was in the Central Valley, 100 degree temperature for 66 days, no water, we didn't give it any water, and not only is it green, but it is also filling its grain. This is incredible. So if we can figure out how that plant is able to do that, then perhaps we can use that information to help other plants be more drought tolerant. But getting GMOs to market is an arduous and costly ordeal something only the largest agriculture and biotech companies can afford. We developed these various different, what I thought were gonna be commercially viable uh, crops that would be of value to people like a hypoallergenic wheat variety, but it is so costly uh, to take them all the way to market uh, in the millions and millions of dollars that as an academic scientist, I don't have that kind of money. So, None of what we developed 
uh, has ever gone anywhere other than here in the lab and it is being stored down in the basement actually in a cabinet. Another hurdle is public perception. Despite the overwhelming scientific evidence that GMOs are safe for human consumption, some consumers simply don't believe it. A 2018 Pew Research Center survey of Americans found that about half believe GMO foods are less healthy than non-GMO foods. One reason for the divide is because critics of genetically modified food have been vocal, calling them frankenfood or unnatural. Researcher Mary Madera often speaks about GMOs. It can be very scary to hear that scientists in a lab somewhere that they've never met have altered these genes, and maybe we don't know exactly what that's going to do. And there is science on that research, kind of pointing to whether or not that's detrimental to health, and I don't think it's reaching the public in the way that it should. Um, for the most part, they're pretty safe. Advances in genetic engineering have now introduced a game-changing technology, genetic editing. Unlike older methods of engineering, genetic editing allows for researchers to produce precisely modified plants faster and easier. The difference our hope as an academic scientist is doing editing, uh, I think will not have the regulatory costs that genetic a GMO has. So perhaps, as an academic scientist, I can enter, actually do what it was I was hired to do, which is to uh, modify crop plants to better uh, survive stress or to taste better or whatever. Genetic engineering could be a solution for people in developing countries facing famine and malnutrition. In the West, vitamin A deficiency is nearly unheard of. In the developing world, however, it can mean blindness or even death. Two decades ago, golden rice was developed to be enriched with vitamin A, but approval of this GMO has been tied up in regulatory processes and trade rules. For Jenny Schmidt, genetic engineering is a technology that's been vilified, but deserves a second, more discerning look. I think for the consumer to overcome the mistrust that's been a, started in, in genetically modified foods is to have a significant, tangible, direct benefit to them. Because when somebody goes grocery shopping, they're shopping for their family and what they want is best for their family. Supporters of genetic engineering believe the biotechnology will lead to bigger and better crops, providing a sustainable solution to create more resilient harvests.